Thank you for joining us. I, I well, yes, I I'd love to join you, but it was also a requirement. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hi, everyone. This is Anthony and Highland from AGP Video. Our devices are rolling, and the floor is yours. Fantastic. So, uh, welcome everyone um, to a uh, regular scheduled meeting of the Mor of the City of Morro Bay Planning Commission, August third, twenty twenty one. It's six p.m. Um, it looks like we have a quorum, and so I would like to uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I am Vice Chair William Roshan, and I'd like to welcome Jen Jennifer Ford, um, Joseph Ingrafia, and Mike Rodriguez is also on the line. And Scott, can I ask you, would you offer us a quick explanation of, about our chair, uh, Susan Stewart? Um, yeah, sure, uh, yeah, Commissioner Roshan. Um, so uh, our, our chair uh, previously was Susan Stewart, and she moved um, out of the city. And the current policy related to planning commissioners uh, is that uh, to be a planning commissioner for the city of Morro Bay, um, and for some of the other advisory bodies as well, um, you have to be a resident of Morro Bay. Um, the, the city council will be taking under consideration at their August 10th meeting um, amending that policy um, to allow others to serve on advisory bodies in the planning commission if you have an interest in the city say like you have a business as does Susan Stewart so um, that item will be going to city council on the 10th hopefully we get an affirmative uh, change to our policy and that would allow Susan to come back on to the planning commission um, and to continue to serve with you all so that is the plan as it stands today <laughs> Thank you for that explanation, Scott. And with that, I would uh, like to call the, uh, the meeting to order. And uh, again, welcome for everyone who's on the participation list. Um, we have some 14 total. So thank you all for joining us on this beautiful California evening. Uh, I'd like to start, if I could, uh, with a moment of silence. Thank you all. And with that, um, any planning commissioner announcements? Joe? Jen? Mike? Hearing none, I'll move to the next agenda item, uh, public comment period. This is a period where the public can comment on uh, really any city business relative to the planning commission, even if it's not agendized. Um, Anthony, do we have uh, anyone with their hand up? We do. We have two people with their hands up. Uh, first is Glenn Silloway. Uh, Glenn, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate uh, you getting to see me here, uh, letting me talk to you tonight. Uh, Planning Commission and staff, uh, hello. Um, I am a Morro Bay resident. And I'm the president of the Historical Society of Morro Bay. So I'm here tonight to urge you. I know you're going to be discussing the uh, priorities for your planning and uh, for goals and objectives for the next year. So I'm here tonight to urge you to make the review and adoption of a historic preservation ordinance a high priority on that list. The adoption of an ordinance and establishment of a broader program of historic preservation that flows from it is part of the new general plan. It's on your list of to-dos already. But I'm asking you to make sure it gets done soon. I'm aware of at least six properties with historic value that are vulnerable to being lost right now. And I regret the loss every time I see a picture of the cloisters or one of our other older structures that's gone. An ordinance would be a small but relatively easy first step toward preserving our heritage. It would allow us to participate in programs and seek grants we could not otherwise do. As you may know, the Historical Society convened a committee of some very skilled and dedicated Morro Bay residents, some of whom uh, on the committee were quite familiar with this commission, by the way. At the end of 2018, uh, we drafted a historic preservation ordinance just to get this process started. Not counting downtime from the pandemic, that talented group worked for over a year to give a draft to the city. It's in your hands. Now I hope you will accept this work and move it forward. We 
will be watching and we are very willing to help further if there's anything we can do. Thank you. Uh, Glenn, thank you so very much, Glenn, for, for, for bringing that to our attention, two, for helping with the ordinance, three, for, for serving, you know, on the uh, Historic Society. We really appreciate that here in the city of Morro Bay. Um, we have another hand raised. Uh, yes, next up is Betty Winholtz. Hi, Betty. <laughs> Hi, this is Betty Winholtz. Um, I would like to say amen to what uh, the former uh, previous speaker said. Um, I went on a tour in Morro Bay a couple of weekends ago, led by someone not from Morro Bay, and it became obvious that our uh, historical society has a key role to play here in introducing outsiders as well as residents here into our heritage. And uh, I would very much like to see that ordinance brought forward. And speaking of which, um, the general plan of which that would be a part of is coming before the Coastal Commission um, a week from tomorrow um, at their meetings on the Zoom next week. And so people that have comments that would like to be made, I'd like to have uh, the people of Morro Bay um, be reminded that um, they have that opportunity if they want to make comment about the change in height limits or ESHA or other issues that might be dear to their heart. And the final thing that I would like to say is that I, along with two other people, are sponsoring an initiative to be brought before the people of Morro Bay um, to um, ban RV camping on the Embarcadero and at the Rock. It was quite a controversial issue when it was passed about six months ago or more by the city council. And um, I think the residents would like to be able to vote on whether that um, is something we want in our town or not. So Thursday at Farmer's Market at Spencer's at uh, two to four, I'll be there with the initiative if anyone would like to sign it. Thank you. Betty, thank you so much. Um, and could I ask both Glenn and Betty, if you could stay on uh, for item C1, that's when we're gonna actually take up and discuss the uh, historic preservation ordinance and if we had questions it would be great to hear from both of you with that um commissioners i don't see any oh is anybody else with a hand raised anthony or are we done yes we have one more here is Ryan oh. garcia okay welcome hi hello can you hear me yeah hi ryan a little louder yeah, okay. Hi, my name is Ryan Garcia. I'm, I'm a Morro Bay resident, and I'd like the, the Planning Commission to address a structure that was built on an adjacent lot of my residence in June of this year. The structure is a, a lean-to shed, and I sent some pictures over to the, the Planning Commission via email yesterday, and uh, my, uh, my first concern with the shed is from a safety issue, and I assume that chemicals and other flammable products, uh, including gasoline, propane, charcoal, lighter fluid, pesticides or insecticides may be stored in the unit. Uh, you know, on hot days, which are increasingly occurring in the area, the temperature in the shed could become very high. And uh, I feel that it's a hazard and it's a concern for the health and safety of my family, which includes young children that play near the area. The structure is less than six feet from my residence and I believe it to contribute to the danger due to its proximity. The shed encroaches also to the property line on the lateral setback and front view shed. And the roof on the shed is angled towards my property, which will result in rainwater uh, draining into my backyard. Uh, the neighbors that place it there has plenty of available space on their, on their lot to move the shed, and uh, all these issues could be avoided. And originally, the code enforcement officer that looked at it saw it and said it, there was a clear violation of city code and that he would work with the, the neighbor to have the shed relocated. But uh, I thought the problem was resolved, but when I talked to them a month later, the staff informed me that uh, due to the, the draft ordinance, uh, it actually allows structures such as this. Uh, but the draft ordinance has not been adopted yet. And uh, even if it was, the current placement of the draft or the structure conflicts with the draft ordinance and existing code. So uh, specifically- So Ryan, um, yeah. I wanna say thank you. I think we all received the letter. Uh -huh. And um, I think at this point, uh, Scott, would this be an all right time for you? Can you opine on Ryan's um, uh, letter and his comments? Yeah, I've, I've spoken to, to Mr. Garcia a couple of times on the issue. Um, he's uh, filed a complaint with the city. We've taken a look at it. 
Um, you know, the, there's there's no building code issue with the location of the shed. We've ran it through our, our building division, um, had our uh, building inspector plans examiner take a look at it. Um, we do have requirements underneath the current code and the draft code related to accessory structures or other types of structures. Um, and uh, one of the, the current code requires six feet of separation for things like this. And the, and the draft code um, allows you to have um, accessory structures that are under 120 square feet and eight feet in height um, right up against the property line um, and uh, and would allow the shed to be located in its current location. I'm not really inclined to have somebody move something in relation to a code that we're going to be adopting that would make it legal. So um, we are going to address the, uh, we are addressing um, with the with the neighboring property owner, the drainage issue. You cannot concentrate drainage across the property line. That is not legal. Um, and uh, we are through code enforcement uh, working on addressing that issue. Okay. Uh, Scott, thank you for that. Uh, it's, this is not an agendized item, so I don't want to open this up for, uh, for comment uh, this time. But if you could, uh, at future meetings, Scott, kind of report on whatever progress we make amount around Ryan's uh, concerns. Sure. Thank you. No other hands, Anthony? Uh, it appears that Ryan Garcia has raised his hand again. Uh, Ryan, are you still? Did you have something else you wanted to add? Yeah. I did. Hello, hello, Ryan. Yeah, can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, I would just like to add one thing here to to address what Scott had just just mentioned here. The draft ordinance says that roofed ex accessory structures shall be at least six feet from any dwelling existing or under construction, either on the same lot or on the adjacent lot. And that is, that, this is, it fits the guidelines here. So if, if this is not the forum to, to actually debate that. Okay. So I think the best thing you could do at this point was please stay in touch with Scott. And then, um, you know, we've asked Scott to come back and tell us um, the outcome and resolve. It and like Ryan, thanks for the, the careful letter and the way you've presented this. We appreciate that. Anthony, I think that's the last hand, right? There are no hands remaining in the queue. Thank you so much. Commissioners, I don't think we have any presentations. Is that right? We do not. Can we move on to the consent calendar? Uh, Scott, any issues on that? No, it's just the, uh, the current and advanced planning processing list. Um, so if you have questions, certainly be happy to answer them. Otherwise, um, it's receiving file. We don't need a vote on that then, right? You don't have to, no. no. Any comments, questions, commissioners? Thank you. Then we're on to our uh, public hearing. Uh, let me introduce case number CDP 21-005, CUP 21-06, and PKG 21-07. This is at 206 Bradley Avenue. And Nancy, I think you're up. Yes, right, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, here we go. So uh, as you mentioned, this is a public hearing to consider a conditional use permit, coastal development permit, parking exception uh, for an addition to an existing single family home at 206 Bradley. The existing site information, uh, the photo on the left shows the sites on Bradley and the photo up in the corner shows a 2018 view of the home, which was um, having some siding replaced. The uh, site is 10,500 square feet. It was at uh, one time expanded by sharing a center lot with the property to the north. So that's why it's a little larger than uh, some of the other properties. The existing older home is 1958 and has an attached two-car garage. 
the exterior of the home has previously been altered, therefore no longer requires a CEQA historic report. The zoning is R1, which allows single family homes. The parcel size is not large enough under the current zoning code to create two lots. And the land use plan is land uh, Central Morro Bay Planning Area 7, which allows commercial and resi residential. The approval process, uh, the existing home is non-conforming as the interior space within the garage and the north side yard setback, which is four feet two inches versus the five feet required. The proposed addition, which is 1,265 square feet, is significantly more than the 25% of the existing home, which is 1,692 square feet. And since the home is non-conforming, the project requires a discretionary review in the form of a conditional use permit. And just aside, since one of the public comments had made a comment about the 25%, that is an indication of what is considered a minor addition. So that's kind of the trigger when if you're adding more than 25% and it's non-conforming, it requires discretionary review. So that's that's not a percentage that indicates a normal uh, addition, just something that's considered a minor addition. Here's the proposed project. The plans I thought were a little confusing, but I'm not an architect, um, but I do look at a lot of plans. So I've put two illustrations up here to show how this works. So the um, rendering on the right shows you um, the top level, which is actually the same finished floor as the existing home, which is up the hill, um, is an addition of a family room and a dining room and a deck. Um, below that, sharing the same ceiling level, be, this is another um, point of confusion, whether this is a three level or two level, and it's, it's a two story, but kind of three levels, um, is an art studio on the right and an ADU on the left, which is not part of this review, but exists nonetheless. They share a ceiling level, so I would say this is three finished floors because the finished floor of the ADU and the art studio is about a foot different. But it's really two stories. Um, and where the car is parked is a storage area for the ADU is not a garage. The image on the left shows you kind of a, a slice of the house that shows you the existing house, how that continues with the same finished floor level, the art studio is below, and then north of the art studio is the ADU. Uh, this is a floor plan, so this is the upper level that has the same finished floor and connection to the existing home. And this is a 970 square foot expansion with the deck on the south and the west sides. And it's a new family room and a dining room with a spiral staircase access down to the art studio. This is the lower level. This is the painting room art studio, 295 square feet and a 204 square foot deck off the art studio space on the west side. This is a view from the street. So this is a photo simulation on the left, a large photo that shows uh, kind of looking northeast. Uh, you can see the existing home in, in the gray up the hill and then the new addition in front. And the image in the uh, oval is the view from the 2018 street view. This is the west and the north elevation. So there are two of the west elevations, one straight on and one is an, at an angle looking kind of northeast. And then there is the north elevation in the lower right hand corner. This is the south, south elevation in the material board. And this shows how the project stair steps down the hill, which is significantly sloped. This is the development standards. And as you can see, the development standards that have not been met are in red, and they are both part of the non-conforming condition of the house. The proposed project is meeting all of the requirements for this zone. 
Um, this is the first time I've ever received a photo of a non-conforming garage showing how you can't park two large trucks in there. Um, the parking exception is required because technically the interior space was not 20 feet by 20 feet clear. Um, however, they are currently using it as uh, parking for two vehicles. So the parking exception is required, but is really a formality and documenting kind of an existing condition. There is adequate parking in the long driveway and they are proposing another driveway um, in front of the storage area for the ADU. So the project meets the findings to support approval of a parking exception. Neighborhood compatibility. The immediate neighborhood has larger parcels ranging from 7,000 to 10,500 square feet with, with home sizes ranging from 900 square feet to 3,400 square feet. About 50% of the homes are original and the balance have been expanded or replaced in the past 20 years. The placement of the addition is consistent with the other homes in the neighborhood. And if you look on the image, I took the existing home and uh, with a scaled plan, I put the blue on there to show where the addition would go from an aerial point of view. And as you can see, the placement of the addition is consistent with the placement of the other homes on the street. And that concludes the presentation and the staff recommendation is for approval of conditional use permit, coastal development permit and parking exception pursuant to the findings and conditions of approval in Planning Commission Resolution 16-21. Uh, Nancy, nicely done, thank you. Um, commissioners, any questions for Nancy? Joe? Nancy, I had a question. Yeah. I, I was looking at the at the rendering. Uh, I, I, yeah, I realize you know renderings are far from perfectly accurate. But uh, I, what I saw was um, what I'll call the uh, the front yard, and then beyond that there was just a little peak of what looked like uh, lawn, which is probably the, um, the the right of way, the, the parking in front of the front of the house. Have the applicants expressed any any uh, any uh, thoughts as to what they're doing there? Are they tending plan lawn, or are they going to, you know, pave that and make up the typical parkway? It will be paved. It will be landscaping. There's a requirement for landscaping in between the driveways, and there's a strict requirement for how much frontage can be driveway. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. And so, and but so the landscaping there would be such that I, I think the the ordinance says that it, it it's such that it can't discourage people from using it as, as a parking place. Is that right? I, I'm not aware of a landscaping uh, ordinance that uh, that doesn't discourage parking in your landscaping. Well, no, no. What I meant was, I, I thought there was a, a city a city law that said you you couldn't put things in the parkway that would be obstacles or barriers. To parking, or am I wrong? Are you talking about in the public right of way? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I maybe Scott can chime in. I, I don't think that they can because the public right of way is not privately owned. Yeah. So if you if you do you know want to put something out there, um, you're extending a driveway out into that area. Those types of things, which they're not proposing. Well, their driveway goes through it, but um, they're not proposing to put any improvements out there. At least not shown on the plans. They would be required to obtain an encroachment agreement from the public works department. Okay. So, like except they wanted to put a, you know, some like a retaining wall out in the right of way, say. But they're not proposing that. Well, well I guess my, here, here was my point. Uh, um, tandem parking, you know, sometimes it's so inconvenient that it's not used regularly. And then I realize we can't discuss it, but there, there is going to be an uh, accessory dwelling unit, which will also add to the parking. So. I, I wanted to make wanted to make sure that there, you know there weren't bushes placed in that right of way so that it would not be available as a parking space. That's that was my point. Yeah, they they're not allowed to unless Public Works allows it. Okay. So I, I guess I, I think I understand what Commissioner Graffi is talking about. So if you look on the like the front page of the plans, um, there is uh, the retaining wall there that has the address on it. 
Um, and that looks like that is the edge of the property line. And then they show this sort of what might be grass or something in front of that, which would actually be the area potentially in the um, in the right of way, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what uh, Commissioner Graffi is talking about. Yeah, I, I mean, I. I mean, I, I was thinking that if there was a nice, even if there was a nice lawn there, and I was somebody looking for a parking space, I might be reluctant to park on what I perceive to be somebody's well-kept lawn, and that would then place the burden of parking on somebody, some neighborhood property. I mean, the property does have, um, you know, a parking space outside in the front setback for the ADU. Right. I'm, um, I'm aware of that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so and then the area of the right of way, I mean, is really regulated um, uh, by the Public Works Department. Um, I guess we could ask them. There, you know, okay. certainly they have representatives. We could ask them what they're doing. So. <laughs> uh, Joe, thank you. Is that uh, are we good? Uh, Jen, I see your hand raised. Thank you, and Mike does as well. Um, I was just, you know, I. I since I'm new to this, still I feel <laughs> I have a question about um, something that Betty Winholtz brought up in one of, in her email to us, um, asking about how the report did not have um, did not address the amount of grading removal or fill that's required for this project. Is that something that we normally include in this? Um, not, at, not at this stage. This, that that would be building permits. I mean, if they're okay. proposing this design and they can speak to it when they get on here, I think that they have a plan for how this will work and they know that it will work. But the details of building the building and all the civil work is coming at the building permit process. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that um, I got some clarification on that. Thank you, Nancy. You'd, you'd also, Commissioner Ford, you'd also note that, um, you know, the, you know, if you're talking about excavation, if you look at the house that's directly adjacent to this, to the south, um, there's a very large retaining wall that's there that they cut in to put that house in because it's cut into the hillside too. So they're, they're doing a similar sort of, you know, design here with their home um, to some extent. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, thank Mike? you. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted to chime in with what Joe was saying. You know, I was really happy with the rendering so far, but since the applicant is here, then they can answer those questions, you know, which will clarify, further clarify the project. So that's let's what go, I was going to ask. Let's yep. go to the presentation. There yes. it is. Do we have a uh, an applicant uh, ready to present for us? Is uh, Thomas Shorey and all, uh, Alan Hulk. Anthony, are they on the uh, list there? Uh, Thomas Shorey is here. Um, I'm the architect on the project, and uh, I, I do not have a presentation. We're, we're happy with uh, the staff report, but I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, the staff report was great. So um, I guess the only question that came out of that was, and if you want to answer it now, is the grading issue. Oh, and uh, the and the landscape issue in the front. So uh, I guess I'll address the, the landscape question first. Uh, just for ease of rendering, we, we showed a, a green texture there. We were not trying to imply a lawn. Uh, it, if, if the owner did decide to do something there, we would go ahead and go through the normal process of getting an encroachment permit and working with staff to make sure that we're meeting all the requirements that they ask. Um, I think right now it's just kind of a, um, an existing loose landscape, uh, but we're, we're definitely happy to, to make sure we're meeting all the requirements there. Um, for the grading, uh, I, I fully agree with what Nancy said. Um, as we move into the construction document phase, we'll work with a civil engineer. And uh, we haven't done the math for you know the fill or the excavation that's required yet in terms of volume, uh, but we definitely know it's constructible and we've been talking with general contractors and structural engineers uh, to make sure of that. Thomas, thank you very much. Um, if there's no other questions uh, for Nancy or Thomas, I'd like to open it up to public comment. Do we have anybody in the queue, Anthony? Uh, thank you, Commissioner Roshan. Uh, I see Betty Windholtz with her hand raised. Please stand by. Okay, Betty, you are unmuted. Thank you. This is Betty Winholtz. Um, first, let me apologize for my bad math. Um, 
I had the um, addition and the uh, current uh, square footage switched around. So it's not a 125% increase. It's only a 75% increase, which I think is still fairly large uh, to have at one time. And though 25% may be the breakaway point for um, when it's no longer a minor use, I think it's also an alert to the community, to the neighborhood, that what's coming in is larger than um, what has normally there in terms of an addition and so back in the day that was a significant figure for us and as we've gone through the years um, perhaps people don't think that's as significant anymore um, i do want to pursue the right of way question for a minute because as we get more adus we're going to be more um, scrounging for parking and I know that people can apply to uh, public works to get exceptions. And I think these exceptions need to stop. Um, people are doing them with or without um, having applied for them. And they're taking away parking on the streets. And it's becoming very crowded on our streets. And I would hope that this could start to become either a condition of when we knowingly put in an ADU. Because those people will have visitors. They will need a place for them to park. That bradley is not a wide street it's fairly narrow and so it's significant that we maintain our right of way and not allow rocks or landscaping or anything to go in there and if that's not appropriate at the planning level which i think it is to make it a condition then i think maybe we need to talk about creating an ordinance about it um, i also would like to uh, refer to the quantity of um dirt and stuff i know that that is uh part of the building but i thought that we had within our ordinance that the planning commission um, got to receive an engineer's report in terms of how much dirt was being moved around um i didn't think that that was something that came later i was under the impression that that's something that you have a right to know and that is part of your decision making um and those are my three comments besides the other ones that you receive from me. Thank you. Eddie, thank you. Uh, let's see, is there any other public comment before we go back and address those issues? Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> I do not see any raised hands left in the queue. Okay. Last chance for anyone who would like to speak from the public. Um, hearing none, Scott, can I ask you first to address the ADU parking? I'm not sure because that's not part of this case. Um, if we can have any discussion on that issue. Nancy? <laughs> um, we definitely can't condition, um, We and we're not talking about the ADU, and you cannot require parking for an ADU, period. So. But they're providing it, which is good. Yeah. And they're yeah. providing one. Which is a good thing, so, yeah. Yes. And the not requiring parking, that's state law. Correct. Yes. Um, Scott, did you have anything else on the ADU issue? Um, I, I didn't have anything else um, on the AD, ADU issue. I, you know, what, you know, in um, you know, in conditioning, you know, what people can and cannot do in the right of way. I mean, we certainly could craft something that they don't put improvements there. Um, but ultimately, the decision of what happens in a right of way is really the public works department and not us. Um, so. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm reluctant to, to go down that road, um, it, knowing that, you know, public works can decide to put sidewalks in there and things like that, you know, I mean, they could, they could choose to do those types of things. So, um, and it's completely within their right and, and that, and that would be something that would be, you know, overturned if there was a condition from a, um, a, a, a planning commission decision that sort of dealt with the right of way, which is what that is. It's unimproved right of way. Right. Um, Scott, the engineer's report, Nancy, um, is Betty right that it's typically a submittal? It's, it comes with the building permit. It's a requirement. Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't normally do that. I mean, there might be scenarios uh, where we would get them for larger developments. Um, you know, this is uh, the example that I was giving to Commissioner Ford about the house that was adjacent to this was to point that this specific issue out is that they had a very similar situation right next door and they they excavated back and put a very large retaining wall in there, you know, just to show you that what they're proposing is very similar to what's happening next door. They're not doing anything special or out of the ordinary. And it's for what it's worth, it's my experience, too, that that, that report doesn't come with a, a, a 
staff and, and planning application. Um, the percentage issue, uh, Nancy, would you want to address that for us? So the so commission I assume you're talking about percentage or, or the fact that, that um, some people believe this is a large addition. Yes. It's, it's actually a trend. So if you think back of you've, you, this body has looked at and approved a lot of very, very similar projects where someone takes an original 1950, 1960 home and double or triples or quadruples the size. And I think it's a function of the real estate market where people are deciding to stay where they are and improve their home and build what they want. And this is the first one we've seen on a lot this large. So we've seen similar size additions on much smaller lots, which with much less street frontage and much less parking area. So the Recording in progress. You see similar, you know, uh, percentage additions in other areas of town. You've seen them recently. This is one of the larger homes that we've had come through um, more recently, uh, but again, has a pretty good sized ADU in it, which I think is nice. So, and it's similar to the ones around it. So it doesn't, it's not out of character. Um, and I do think, Nancy, your point that it's a larger lot um, is true because this is not a percentage of the lot. It's a percentage of the existing house, right? Correct. Um, so, commissioners, uh, we've had the presentation. It's your turn. Um, we've heard from staff. Uh, you can feel free to ask staff any questions you want, um, or I'm uh, open to comments or motions. Who would like to start? Uh, this is Mike. Uh, Bill? Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, I've taken some diligent notes here, and I want to, you know, state that this home fits and matches, you know, the other homes in the neighborhood seems to. It's been a trend, as was recently stated, and uh, more importantly, it meets the requirements of the city. So I'm going to go ahead and make a motion at this point to approve this based upon those main you know, characteristics of this project, the fact that it fits the neighborhood. It's, it, you know, it's consistent with what we've approved. And, uh, you know, with the other questions about right of way and grading, you know, those, they brought everything that needs to be brought up to us at this point. So there may be more that comes with the grading, but that'll be not us, that, that we won't be dealing with that. It will be another department. So I think they've met all the requirements to our level. Mike, thank approval. you for approval. So I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve. B1. Thank you. That motion. Uh, let's see if we have other comments. Jen? Oh, Joe? What, what, what do you want to add? Uh, well, one, uh, I apologize. I forgot to compliment the applicant and the architect on what I thought was a really outstanding, you know, modern design. I'm, as I said before, I'm, I'm not always the biggest fan of modern uh, architecture, but I particularly like this one. And um, and uh, I'd be willing to second, second the motion and we approve it. Fantastic. Jen, do you have anything else to add? Uh, just that I, I really like the design also, but um, I also want to mention that I hear what Betty's saying about, you know, being worried about house sizes increasing and this being a trend. Um, however, my own personal opinion is that I would rather see a home expand on its lot than um, create new you know, new buildings and new lots and expanding the neighborhood itself. So um, if creating a larger home means more people can live within that structure um, and in, you know, in a lot that already exists, you know, it's just kind of one of those bittersweet things because I know that the larger the homes are, 
the um, the higher the values are in this area, and it's more difficult to be a home buyer here. Um, so I do hear that concern, and I just wanted to um, to to let Betty know that I, I hear her. Um, but uh, no, I don't have any other things to say about this. Um, I'm in favor it, favor of it. So let's go ahead and move on with that. Thank you, Bill. Uh, sounds good. Um, my only comments are, um, I think it actually fits the neighborhood. I, th I think it actually fits the site and it's really well designed. Um, Nancy, and this is, you know, just a, an afterthought, but the, uh, the material list, the design is, is really well done. Um, do we often see, uh, I know there are discretionary substitutions, but for example, if all of a sudden the uh, poured in place board form concrete becomes stucco, um, that really does change the nature of the architecture. How would a, let's say if a change like that was suggested, how would staff respond? So there's a condition of approval in, in most resolutions that says any um, minor change can be approved by the community development director. And if it's considered a major change, then it's probably going to have more consideration, whether it comes back to the board, to the commission as a change, um, that would really be Scott's call. So, so just speaking to that, uh, Commissioner Roshan, so when the commission makes um, specific comment on aspects of a project, um, specifically aspects of a project they like or prefer or want. Um, staff, if somebody proposes a change to it, staff does not consider that minor. Uh, we always consider that major and bring it back because it was a point of contention for the Planning Commission. So those are those items always get brought back no matter how small they are. If the Planning Commission asked for something specifically or provided significant comment on something, aspect of the project. That's, that's what I wanted to hear, so thank you. Uh, <laughs> And, and that's helpful to us as commissioners because when we opine and sort of uh, critique a project, it does have meaning and weight. And in this case, I think we all uh, are supportive of the design and I think the materials um, are very important to it. And so uh, for me, like changing out the board form concrete to another material would be a major change. I think it's integral into the design. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Scott, Bill. Bill, yeah. consistent with what you're saying, I, it gives me a lot of uh, satisfaction knowing that Scott, what Scott just said, the fact that they do make notes and if the commission really opined on that issue, they're not going to change things without giving us some extra consideration as well. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. And Nancy, I know you have an eagle eye, so you'll, you'll watch out for us. Thank you. Um, Scott, uh, Nancy, do you want to poll the commission? Yes. Commissioner Graffia. Uh, yes. Commissioner Ford? Yes. Commissioner Rodriguez? Yes. And Vice Chair Roshan? Yes. Thank you. Thanks again to the applicant and thanks to all the, uh, uh, thanks to Betty for commenting on the project. And we're on now to new business. Um, and we're going to discuss city council goals and objectives update. That was all part of our staff package. Um, commissioners, I'm gonna propose that what we do is go down item by item on the nine uh, considered uh, topics. And so um, we'll go around each one of us uh, asking questions of Scott uh, and uh, offering our comments and see if we can begin to set a priority list. Um, does that sound like a, uh, an appropriate way to handle this? Or does anybody have another strategy? We're good, Mike. You all right? Um, let's go I want to, to ask a question, though. So, oh, at the end, at, at the end of this, I would hope that the planning commission could pick its four or five highest priorities and submit them as a whole, as a package from the commission to the council. That yeah, I think, that, I think that's right. So we'll go down the nine okay, items. Um, we're, we've, we've probably got easily 45 minutes to an hour because I think it might take a little time. But um, let's do that and see if we can build consensus. And at that point, we'll, uh, you know, someone can make a motion and we'll see what the five might be. Sound good? 
Um, let's start with climate action plan update. Uh, Scott, would you want to say anything before we begin? Uh, sure. So um, we are, uh, you know, uh, the climate action plan, we are involved um, uh, regionally um, with the greenhouse with the greenhouse gas um, stakeholders group. Um, it involves uh, jurisdictions uh, in the county, other jurisdictions and other regulatory agencies uh, to deal with climate change. Um, one of the things that they're more focused on now is um, most of the cities, uh, and including the county, I believe, um, their climate action plans uh, have expired. Um, the city of San Luis has a department that kind of deals with this, so they've actually updated theirs, and they're ahead of the curve, and um, we're all jealous of that. Um, but uh, the group right now, I think, is starting to focus in on looking at opportunities and grant funding um, to do another initiative to update all the caps at the same time. So um, we are doing some work, and we do have an ongoing meeting, and our, and our uh, senior planner, uh, Cindy Jason, um, goes to those meetings quarterly, and we have one coming up here in a couple of weeks, I believe. So that's about all I have. Yeah, uh, this is an item that interests me, especially, you know, with Morro Bay and a lot of the new efforts we're taking on. Um, we really should make it part of our brand to be progressive around energy use. Uh, others, commissioners, do you have comments? I do. Oh. Jen? <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I, I already touched on this subject um, or this line item in our, our last meeting. Um, so I, I think you guys already pretty much know how I feel about it. But um, yeah, I think it, it, when I went through here and prioritized on my own just to kind of get a visual of where I'm at on all of these items listed, it is in my top five for sure. Um, but I would love to hear further discussion. So go, Joe. Oh, um, well, God knows I, I scored people silly with you know, my, my opinion that climate change is an existential threat, not only to the community, but to the planet. Um, and I would include it, you know, were we not trying to get it down to five, but again, my, my thought is from a, from a practical standpoint, um, to do anything significant with respect to climate change requires enormous resources and a lot of really powerful players. Uh, and unfortunately, Moral Bay is, has neither of those. So, you know, I, I would I would opt to try and, you know, look at the things that we can really make a, a meaningful contribution to at this point. Again, not because it's not sufficiently important, only because we're trying to sort of whittle it down to, you know, four or five. Joe, thank you. Uh, Mike? Yeah, and I would, I'm just going to say I would make it one of my top five. So I think Jen is, Bill is, and I am so far. So if we can pull Joe along in the process, that'll be great. But I would say let's leave it there for now. Let's move on to the next one. How does that sound? See if we'll get to the top five. I think that, that got sounds three good. Four. That got to be a four. Before we leave it, I'm going to offer Joe one little okay. bit of thought. Um, I do think there's modest things we can do in the city that um, signals our interest. Uh, one is going to be uh, photovoltaics, um, where we begin to emphasize looking at those kinds of things. Two might be lead certification. These are all modest things we can do that shows our commitment. And, um, you know, working with Scott in the larger case, we might find more. Um, you know, whether it's electric, you know, chargers throughout the city, things like that, that I think are need to be discussed. Now, whether we do those, I don't know, but I guess I'm offering Joe, I think there's more modest things we can do. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, rewriting lead certification standards. It can be adopting pieces of it. Final and Bill, just to kind of and just to kind of uh, um, dovetail on that a little, I think we live in an area where that's almost a natural, a given that as we, especially with these bigger projects coming, we're going to be really sensitive to our climate there. Yeah. You know, with the, so it's almost a built-in, especially being on the coast. So we have additional pressures from the Coastal Commission and various other bodies that are going to be expecting us to do this as well. So I just thought I'd chime in too. So it's almost like given almost we can't change more things we don't want to we don't want to okay good great 
I like it. Let's go on to item two, which is the enhanced infrastructure financing districts. Uh, this one is really interesting to me, and we got a pretty good explanation at the last meeting. Um, we got some additional information on it. Scott, would you want to give us a quick overview? Um, sure. I mean, this is a this is a you know it's replacing um, what you probably all heard of before um, redevelopment agencies. It's a it's it's where you can take tax increment from a specific area, you outline it, um, and you can get tax tax increment in an area. You can you can bond against it um, over time, and you want to do it in areas where you have a lot of development. Um, so an example would be you know we you know would be potentially in the area around the power plant where we have a. $450 million um, lithium ion battery project potentially going. We don't I mean that's not through the process yet, but that's a good example of you're going to dramatically increase property taxes in that area. And so that you could bond against that over a 20 year period, say, um, to do um, improvements in, within that area. Maybe it's another bridge across the uh, Morro Creek uh, for vehicles. Maybe it's um, new bike paths on the east uh, side of uh, the Embarcadero, things like that we could, we could do. Or street just regular street improvements to enhance the aesthetics. You can do those as well. So um, it can be handled, you know, used for those types of things. Yeah, this is an exciting one. Commissioners, can I ask you to opine? Joe? Yeah, I, I really support this. It just strikes me as really, you know, reasonable. If, um, as I mentioned, I think that the last meeting on the Embarcadero, if, if uh, additional burdens are being you know, placed on some of the business owners, in terms of limiting parking or, or making things one way, then you know, then uh, these resources could then be planted, installed in the Embarcadero in the form of you know wider sidewalks and and, uh, and vegetation and benches and the like that would ultimately bring in business and, and, and make it a uh, a pedestrian uh, destination, you know, which would be good for the Embarcadero. And, and likewise, I like the example. Uh, of the uh, of the battery installation, same thing. Just sort of put the dollar. If you're taking dollars out, uh, put the dollars back where they came from. Yeah, it does seem timely, Joe. I, I agree. Mike. Yeah, and again, I'll dovetail uh, this time with Scott the fact that it's a public benefit. We could get public benefits out of this, right? So that's what our committee was created for. So we would definitely want to get some of that enhanced infrastructure from the projects that are coming and we're working on that as a subcommittee to get that stuff so it's definitely my top five so i just thought i'd chime in so i've got that as one of my top five thank you mike jen you're the only one left <laughs> um i actually have talked to a few business owners recently and they actually brought up Districting and how important they feel it is. I didn't even I didn't even ask them about it. They brought it up to me. Um, oh, you're a planning commissioner. Let me tell you about how I feel about districting. And it's always been positive. And um, I, you know, I know it's important to our our business community, which is makes it very important to me. Um, and so I do see the value in exploring these opportunities. Um, I have nothing negative to say about it. Is it in my top five? I'm teetering. Okay. So I'm, I'm not convinced one way or the other yet. So let's move on and uh, maybe we can convince you on this one. Right now we have Joe, Mike, and um, I think it's incredibly interesting and timely. So it's definitely in my top five. And we'll work on Jen. So next one, number three. Historic Preservation Ordinance. Um, we've heard some incredible support for this one. Um, I'm gonna take this right to the commissioners. Uh, we know that there's actually, uh, as Glenn has explained, Betty spoke to it. Um, we have an ordinance in hand. Um, and I guess I'll go one step further. It seems to me that Morro Bay is extraordinary in terms of its history and the ability for us to codify it and institutionalize it is a, a huge opportunity and so this is maybe my number one pick others yeah, I, I vehemently support that we have this uh, uh, preservation uh, ordinance in place uh, uh, I, again i just think it's essential to take any effort to preserve what we value and enjoy here in Morro Bay. Yeah, we have to do this. Nice. Mike? 
Yeah, and I think I told Bill this earlier and just chit-chatting that I came from a city that was over 150 years ago, uh, 50 years old, and we started valuing our history about 75 years in, into the game. So this is about the right time. We've got to start preserving our history. So this is definitely top five for me, too. Nice. Jen? That's my number one. I know I, I knew I liked you. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I'm glad you like me. <laughs> so that's that's good. Number four, tree bank program. Um, I think we all know what it is. Do we need Scott to add anything or can I just go right to the commissioners? Jen? <clears throat> Sure, I'll start. Um, I have it in my top five. I think it's something that is completely valuable for our city. I feel that it is a attainable, smaller project that we can do. It's not this gigantic project. I think that we could even, you know, get the help from maybe Cal Poly. Um, you know, we can probably get it funded. Maybe there's grant money out there. I don't know, but I just feel as though... Um, it's achievable in a shorter amount of time, and I think it would greatly benefit our city. So I, I put it in there as one of our easier, attainable, important um, top five uh, line items. So cool. just to add what you said, Jen, um, earlier I helped organize a, a, an information session where we brought in the botanist and talked about the trees and their recommendations of a... Uh, uh, a, a tree map, actually mapping it. I've talked to Scott about it. We have a map. We have the beginnings of that. And we do have interest from uh, Cal Poly in, in doing a program where the students get involved and help us further the inventory, update it, maybe make maps. Um, all this has to be discussed and decided, but this makes it a, a, a possibly a number two for me on the, uh, the top five. Mike? And it's, if it falls under the category of public benefit, I'm always going to support it. I think having beautiful trees all over the city is a public benefit. So I support that top five. Wonderful. Joe? Yeah, and, and I, you know, really bemoan you know, the disappearance. I've, I've lived here about five and a half years now on a full-time basis. And at least a half a dozen really magnificent trees have disappeared, you know, all for reasonably good reasons. But we need to do something to make some effort to replace these trees because uh, uh, the, the tree canopy in Morro Bay is part of its charm. Well, and I'll, I'll just, as a summation, um, a number of these really do fit the brand of our city and they fall right in our wheelhouses, you know, the planning department and, and commission. And, you know, the preservation is one. I think the energy is another. The trees have to be right up there as part of our brand. And so I think this is lovely. Uh, the BID, Business Improvement District. Um, Scott, I am going to ask you to offer a few words on this one. I'm um, sure, absolutely, uh, Vice Chair Roshan. Um, so, uh, business improvement district. This is, you know, the, the areas our business. We have the four um, business areas in town. That's North Main, Quintana, downtown, and the waterfront. Um, these entities, the businesses in these areas, can uh, agree to form a district um, whereby they could, uh, you know, put improvements in those areas. They could be simple improvements like uh, furniture along the streetscape, it could be planners, it could be things like that. Um, and uh, I had put this in the uh, the overall list of 10 uh, table that I'd given you at the previous planning commission meeting when we started this discussion. Um, and you heard from uh, the city manager, Scott Collins, um, that uh, part of our contract, and I was not aware of this, um, part of our contract with the chamber is to move this initiative forward and to have um, Erica Crawford, uh, chamber CEO, and her folks uh, do outreach to our business community to see if there's interest in any of the four um, business districts in town. So um, they will be starting that, um, you know, coming up here in the coming months. Um, so I think it's a good initiative. It's something that's already underway and something that we have the chamber working on because we're partnered with them through an agreement. So that's um, actually pretty fantastic if you ask me. I was just unaware that it ended up being part of the contract. So I think that's uh, important news. Mike, mm -hmm. would you like yeah, to Yeah, and I would say that that takes it off my top five because somebody else is working on it. 
you know, currently. So we would want to push something up to the council that is currently not being, you know, driven as well as this is being driven by the by the chamber, right? So they're they're driving this so we don't have to drive it. Other commissioners, I, I'm I'm a little divided on that. I think um, our support for something like this um, is as um, is as important as the actual workload. And um, this is not a done deal that you know businesses um, feel comfortable with this kind of stuff. And so there has to be exploration and thought. But I think the fact that as as uh, a planner, um, I've seen this incredibly successful in other cities. And uh, it does seem to me that it's got real opportunity here in Morrill Bay. So I disagree with Mike on this one. I, I, I think it's important enough that I would still like to include it in our top five. You know what I was going to ask, Bill, is, uh, and then I want Scott to chime in, is that when I heard that, you know, I, I, I actually heard it about the same time Scott heard it, that the uh, commerce, the chain, you know, was working on this. But I said, okay, so where's our, where do we get together with the with the chamber, right, and drive this as well, Scott? You know, uh, Bill. So it's not that I don't want it. I just want to see that that connection, right? Is that about right, Bill? If we're going to put it on our top five, it's got to be. We got to drive it somewhat. I I like it, and I see ways. But let, let Scott take a swing at that's that. Right. That's right. That's so, right. So yeah, I think that I, I think Commissioner Rodriguez, that's a, a good point. I, I do think that you know we do have an entity that we're, that's working on that would be the chamber. But I think support from the planning commission goes a long way because you'd be likely looking at some of the outcomes from this these efforts. Uh, so having support from the commission at a minimum, voicing that support to city council, I think is important. I think the planning commission saying that you feel this is an important initiative and one that we should be pursuing and looking into, I think is very valuable. And I think is very valuable for support for the city council as well. So, and mm -hmm. given that the chamber is going to be doing, you know, starting the work on this, there's not a lot of, you know, work involved on our end in the you know initial phases of that. Um, so it just provides, you know, I think some support for it would be maybe worthwhile. Can I ask our chair a question, Bill? Can I ask you a question, Bill? Sure. Could we uh, uh, pony up the commissioner to, you know, to be part of that initiation process and make sure we're involved? I mean, I, if if we do that, I'll be. I'm all for it. I just don't want to let we it. Can, we can offer for sure, and okay. I think that would be helpful. And I think a bridge there might be something that a, a, a young BID might like, but that would be their decision. So, uh, but I like the uh, I like the offer. Joe, we haven't heard from you. Um, You're being yeah. Well, it's a it's a very good suggestion, and I, and I know that it's in my top six or seven. Um, I just I'll, I'll I'll wait to see how things fall out on the other. I mean, because because this and and the earlier financial district both address the same same things that I'm interested. But in in very different ways, right? Yes, yes. But but both of them are in, intent on 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 making either the Embarcadero and Main Street and the other areas, uh, uh, destinations, you know, and I, and that's what I and it, you know, I mean, I do think even if we do support this, that doesn't mean we think it's the obvious only choice or right choice. I think this is still going to go through a, a, a difficult process with all the business owners and their opinion would make a difference to me. Um, I think probably to all of us. So supporting this is not, I, I think I'm saying this right, supporting this is not saying that it's, um, that it has to happen. I think that what I'm supporting is an exploration of, you know, is it a good fit for Morro Bay? I think that's what I'm suggesting. Jen, do you have a take? <laughs> Sure. Um, North Morro Bay, is this, you know, I haven't really um, been a part of this conversation with the chamber. I'm, I'm a chamber member, but I, uh, I, I haven't really been involved in the talks for this. Um, the, maybe Bill or one, somebody here can clarify a little bit more. Um, as far as establishing these districts, are we, are we looking to only create districts for the more popular areas, or could this also include North Morro Bay, uh, Quintana area, um, 
is there limitations is what I'm asking. I'm just not really familiar with this. So I'm about to go on that, but they do define districts and then those, you know, those property owners have to vote and, and uh, get involved. So it's usually very specific, the boundaries. Scott? Yeah, yeah no, uh, that's, that's correct. So, um, you, you know, you, you're, you're forming the district and the folks inside of that district are voting to tax themselves for this, right? Um, you know, which is different from the EIFD, right? That's a tax increment thing. That's, that's entirely different. Um, that moves tax dollars around. This is people in those areas of, uh, agreeing to tax themselves. I, I just simply was pointing out earlier, uh, Commissioner Ford, that in other documents, we've identified the four economic areas in town, and that's North Main or North Morro Bay, like you were referring to, Quintana, um, downtown and the waterfront. That, that's the, the, two of those groups can get together and do it themselves. You know, the waterfront and downtown could do it, or the downtown and Quintana could do it if they wanted to. Um, uh, so it, they could all agree to get together and, and form one whole one if they wanted with all the commercial areas in town. It's, it's up to them, really. And I guess I would add, Scott, tell me if this is right. Um, you want to form a BID with like-minded interests so you can focus your resources in a way that betters the district as a whole. So I think that's why it would happen in, you know, it, with a number of districts, right? Yeah, I think I think that's exactly correct. I mean, you're, you know, the, the things that people want in the downtown are probably think, different than things that people, the business owners want in North Maine, right? So it, it makes sense that you would have them broken up like that. That's normally how it works, normally how you see them. Um, but they're, you see all different kinds of iterations of them, it just depends. So commissioners, let's put this one on a back burner and let's move on to the next uh, item. And then we'll revisit these when we set our priorities, if there's a reason to. Um, commercial design guidelines. Um, Jen, I think you had talked about this last time. Um, I'm interested in design guidelines that don't exist right now, which would, you know, especially not for the uh, Embarcadero or Main Street. I'm more interested in some of the other areas. Um, do you have an opinion on any of that? Jen? Are you asking, are you, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, and, and that is, okay, so I have commercial design guidelines in my top five, which is why I'm being a little bit picky about the other ones that I'm not 100% convinced on yet. Um, I really feel as though we're lacking in um, aesthetic uh, appeal uh, when you're driving along the highway and you look at our, our city from, from that standpoint um, or that viewpoint, it's not very pretty um, in most of the areas. Um, I think uh, there's just, there's a lot of room for improvement and I feel as though commercial design guidelines could certainly be improved. Um, so I, I do value this quite a bit and so I, this is where i'm i'm doing the teetering is is on this and a couple of other ones so i do really feel that it's valuable so let me if i may scott can i ask you because um i know that we have guidelines for the embarcadero and for main street um the fact that this commission has seen several projects along the highway that uh you know, really have suffered from lack of definition, I think. And I, I agree with Jen on that one. Um, how best to address that? And do the guidelines we have now, um, sort of like when the commission opines and we say, um, we're really suffering, something's lacking here. Is there a way that we can, without a, a large effort of design guidelines, get some improvement aesthetically along uh, the highway. So, so I, I think, you know, short of going, I think I think a good point here is we do have a lot of commercial design guidelines. We have it in the downtown and waterfront strategic plan. 
We have it in the waterfront master plan for those areas down on the waterfront specifically. Um, we have them in the North Main specific plan that has some design guidelines in it. We also have a draft zoning code um, that has uh, some design policies in it that apply to both residential and commercial projects. Um, you know, short short of going full commercial design guideline, you know, effort, we could bring all of those things together and have the planning commission take a look at all of those and see where because a lot of the policies would cross over. They they don't didn't just are okay for downtown and the documents they they'd apply elsewhere. We also have an economic development strategic plan that has enhancements for our gateways to the city and our, our main corridors along Highway One. Um, and I would say I would think most of you haven't seen any of that. Um, and that might be like a worthwhile you know place to start this at least have a, a, an expanded discussion with the commission to see you know so you can see what we all what we have and do we want to apply some of these things that are in the downtown and the waterfront maybe tweaked a little bit so they fit say north maine or quintana um you, you see a lot of backs of businesses on quintana right and that's not very pretty <laughs> um coming up with some ideas for those are things that the planning commission could do from a policy standpoint you don't even have to have you know specifically adopted guidelines you could come up with a policy for it as opposed to a standalone separate document that you hold up uh, thanks, Scott. And um, commissioners, I think that's uh, good advice. And what we're looking at doing, especially, you know, along the highway is um, it's more uh, raising the bar in design than it is structuring a program, I think. But I'd love to hear, you know, Jenna, your, Joe, Mike, do you guys have any thoughts? Yeah, I, I would I would agree completely about raising the bar and and having you know some some notions and some ideas in place when you know people come to us with their projects. I'm thinking of the you know the Sonic Drive-in of a, of a few years ago, and um, you know there was considerable effort had to be exerted to somehow you know amend their typical design so that it might work better in in Morro Bay. And, but if we had some guidelines readily available so that these people could see uh, what's expected of them. And I mean, it's, it's when visitors come to the city, the impression is for the most part, you know, created by the ocean and by the commercial establishments they see. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I think this is essential. This is one of my. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Mike? Yeah, and when Scott was talking, I was going back to my old days in my other cities of planning commissioner when we would get together and deal with all the, the whole city, all, all parts of the city, not just the south side, the north side, the west side, or the east side. But occasionally we get together, a council member who was a policymaker, and planning commissioners, one or two, and we would work on those. So in other words, you had something going on on the north side, but it had to fit the north side. So you had the power of the of the council member, the policymaker, but yet you had the ideas of the planning commission. So it was a standing committee, and we would work on these all over the city. You know, so this this you know what I mean. This is not it. It's not just going to happen once. It's going to happen over and over and over. And you can't just create one guideline that fits everything. You know, because so you know that's what we did in my last city. I'm not saying that's what we should do here, but we had, when Scott said policy, I'm not a policy maker, right? So we need some help with that part of it if we're gonna get there. So I, that's just I, my impression. I think it's interesting and I've had similar experiences yeah. where just the emphasis from the commission has made a giant difference. Yes. And, you yes. know, but Jen, I think you're the one I really wanna hear from. Um, you championed this last time, uh, what do you think? You're on mute, Jen. Let me, let me unmute myself. I'm curious how um, how do we raise that bar? Like, it, it, you know, I'm off the commission in, in two years, less than two years. Um, you know, as we come and go, if, if we don't have a policy or, you know, improved guidelines or whatnot, how do we ensure that that standard will stay raised for future projects? That's just where I'm at because I, I feel as though we need to have something in place or, you know, I'm well, we afraid. Go ahead. We to institutionalize it, right? So it's not just about what you think and I think. Um, and your question is, and maybe, maybe Scott can help us, how do we do that in a way that is not full-blown bringing in a consultant to do guidelines? 
So, so that's a that's a that's a good question about how to do that, and that's that's actually what we did um, with the residential design guidelines. That was done by staff. Um, it, interestingly enough, you know, with the previous project we had earlier this evening on, um, uh, my one of the first things I came into was a was an issue related to a very large single family home uh, it, in in the general vicinity of the house that was up, the, up there this evening earlier um, and uh, didn't fit in the neighborhood. And the houses around it were all like 2,000 square feet and under and the house proposed was 5,000 square feet. Created a lot of angst in the neighborhood, a lot of angst in the planning commission, a lot of angst in the city council, went through the whole appeal process, got denied, denied, denied. They couldn't revise it. And so um, it ended up staying that way. And uh, immediately thereafter, this is probably two weeks in, I started residential design guidelines. It took us 11 months to get through it, but that's where the, that's where the residential design guidelines came from and that came from sitting down with the planning commission every other meeting and developing them um so that's a pretty laborious process um but it could be something along those lines um we could have a subcommittee of the planning commission say you know assist in this so it could facilitate it a little bit and we could have the opening working session on this be me bringing to you all of the things where we have design guidelines related to commercial development because you probably don't have that all in one place right now so And and let me offer, and Scott, uh, please tell me what you think of this. Um, It seems to me that the guidelines that would help us, we need quickly around the highway. And I don't know if we need a complicated process where there's, you know, an aesthetic debate, a political debate. I suppose that's why I'm encouraging us to think about a low bar where we simply say, you know, we need better design. This is something we have to to have and staff would, you know, deliver that message from the commission. Um, one thing I've done in the past is you come up with like a like an outline recommendation from the commission so that this happens quickly rather than laboriously. And then we can through that, we through projects, we can refine it and say we're doing well or we're not doing well enough. So the reason I'm hesitating, Jen, is the effort to get guidelines is sometimes long and hard. Um, Scott, do you buy any of that? It is. I mean, I got. I was trying to give you the example previously. Like we were literally going almost every other meeting. They were residential design guidelines, and we borrowed liberally from other communities. And it still took us eleven months to get through that. Um, you know, and it was a lot of writing and rewriting of the document. Um, I don't envision if we went through that process, it would be a whole lot different. Um, uh, what I do think is if we had, if we were able to use some of the existing policies that we have, and then there are some other ideas I have about getting some stuff from out there in the world, I can get those examples in front of you and we could do something that's, you could adopt a planning commission could adopt a resolution that says, hey, these are the standards we want you to follow, and then staff will follow those. Um, you don't, it doesn't have to go to city council. It's not, not as official as the design guidelines, like the residential ones that I had to take to city council to have them adopted. It's, it's like you, I think what Commissioner Roshan said was a lower bar. So, um, yeah, I think we could do something along those without a lot of, without a whole lot of work, not that whole, like every other meeting spending several hours uh, going over. I think we don't need to do that to get probably something that would be useful um, to help us. So That sounds good. Thank you for that, Mike. Yeah, and, you know, obviously this is something that Jen's passionate about. So she said something about two years. I hope she can be reappointed, and if she can't, we've got to get two years. We've got to get something done. So I'd like to get her passion as part of this, so I think we can do what Scott just said. You know, with you, with your advice about the low bar, we can do this with Jen's passion as part of that. So that's all I'm suggesting because, you know, I just got on and I'm going to have time. But if Jen just has two years, then let's get it done. And using your, you know, what you, you and Scott just said, using your kind of model there. So, Mike, thank you. And, and I'm going to add real quick to a suggestion, Jane. Uh, Jen, if you and I, if you're interested, I'd be happy to join you in a, a, a short subcommittee effort uh, working with Scott to make that all happen. I'd be for that. Thank you, Bill. Joe? Uh, I I like what Scott said, too, because for someone like me who doesn't have a background in architecture, sort of drawing what exists now with respect to commercial design and putting this in front of us would kind of give us the vocabulary so that when a project comes before us, we would really much more easily be able to articulate what we don't like 
Yes. The market might can see change. Then oh, it's it's not right. But I'm I'm not quite sure why it isn't right. I, you know. No, that sounds good to me, Joe. And I'll, I'll offer one other reason I like this plan is that the commission can learn through the projects we see, mm -hmm. and so it's it's a much more well crafted. Uh, effort than it is just throwing, you know, aesthetics at it. So, um, you know, we learn a lot by the projects we see. Um, we really do. And I, I guess um, I also like the speed of it. So anyhow, Jen, if, if uh, we can visit, revisit this one, but would, would you consider not putting it in the top five? Yeah, I raised my hand because I was going to say I'm willing to remove it after discussion thank you no thanks for for your openness on this one um the next one is housing for homeless uh scott you want to give us an intro um yeah so this was uh the you know this was one of these items the nine here are the items that you, you talked about last time the housing for homeless is an initiative that we are looking at uh, commissioner rodriguez raised the uh you know the the um brought forward that the, the state had released about 2.7 billion dollars in housing money most of it's to deal with homelessness um these last three items are kind of very similar um those uh those funds are being um funneled through the home key program at hcd housing State Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, we again are, uh, uh, we do work through the re regional housing group. Um, this is because this money is out there. Our next meeting is, I think, on the 12th um, of August uh, with the regional housing action team. And that'll be one of the items um, of discussion at that meeting is um, how we can address some of the homelessness issues that are out there and how we can do it on a regional basis. Um, so, um, we're, we're doing some of these things now. Um, I think they are very important. And we do have homeless issues, obviously, countywide. Um, uh, and that's one of the uh, the topics that the Regional Housing Action Team is takes on, as does a similar working group that involves the city managers. Uh, this is one of their topics that they meet on regularly. So, so, so Scott, let me interrupt real quick. I think you had said last meeting that um, the, the housing opportunities needs to be a top of our five list because your staff is already doing this. So that's the, yeah, so that's the, I'm sorry. Um, we, we are do, we're doing housing element implementation right now. Um, and that housing element implementation, uh, you know, includes the, uh, the, uh, the development of, uh, found a blank now, sorry. Um, the uh, affordable housing, affordable housing. No, oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, we're, so the, um, Sorry about that. So the uh, the group is is working on um, where we have a consultant for it, and we're we're developing uh, design uh, development by right. Sorry, I'm so tongue tied at the moment. But design uh, by right policies, meaning that you could have a multifamily housing project maybe up to 10 units approved by staff. So you don't have to go to planning commission or city council for that. Um, we're developing objective design guidelines to go with them. So you know what it'll look like. Um, and if you meet those requirements, then you can get approved at staff level. Um, we're also working on that, that. That's already in the works, what you just described. Yes, we're doing all of this right now. We have $160,000 in grant funding and uh, we are working with the consultant as we speak. And we're doing, there's several other things involved with it as well. And then we with, with a separate initiative with four other communities, three other communities, we're developing stock ADU plans that we'll be able to hand to folks uh, that they want to build an accessory dwelling unit. Um, they'll be able to use those plans without having to pay to have them designed. So. Yeah. Mike? Yeah, and I was going to say, because I did, I was kind of a driver at the last meeting. I'm, I'm glad Scott kind of put those all together the last three seven eight nine because i think they're all they all work together right where i come from the bay area you became homeless because the home prices went so high now they're trying to backtrack and create affordable housing so these things are just they're in, integrated they're related to each other but uh, so i think scott just said it they're working on it already so that doesn't have to be a major one of our first five but i'd still like to have my hand in it somewhat you know what I mean? So I'd be willing. I made that offer last time. Housing is such a big thing to me because where I came from, housing was such a big thing. Mm -hmm. Affordable housing, just 
any kind of housing. So I'd like to, I'd be willing to be part of that process if Scott needs help, if he needs help. That's all I'm going to say. That way we don't have to put it in our top five. All right. So we're really talking about items seven, eight, and nine. Yeah. Yep. Commissioners, any other comments on seven, eight, or nine? Joe? Um, you know, I, I, I feel obligated that we include you know, the notion of one of the goals be affordable housing yes. here in the world, way because you, it, no. you know what we experience here is so woven with you know the various classes of people and income levels and and the need to have the police to live in the community and the teachers to live in the community and and uh, and, and uh, services provided by people who can afford and everything everything stems from that. So um, I, I just don't feel comfortable in, in any sense ignoring that as one of the goals that certainly the planning commission should pursue. I, I, I'm also a big advocate for for the for the for the homeless, but there I I realize that that has to be a regional approach to it. Um, but, but but the affordable housing is something that you know we as a community in Morro Bay could and should do something about. Can I ask you a question, Joe? Can I ask you a question, Joe? Uh, I, I remember I wanted to go to that meeting. There's going to be a meeting coming up on August 11th, Scott, or whenever. And that gets us, right? I mean, I'm with you. I totally agree with you. I just don't know if we're going to have room for the top five. We can make a top six, you know, put up housing in there. But I'm just saying we're trying to create our priority list. But it's not going off my list of high priorities for me. And I know it's not going off your list. So what I'm saying is there a, a way we can make it so that we submit to the council our top five, but housing still is going to be worked on by us somehow. Like what I said with Scott, like being part of a process of making housing happen here for for homeless, for affordable, you know, for whatever, you know, so dealing with seven, eight, nine, in other words, is there a way we can... Yeah, yeah, this is. I mean, <laughs> these are very difficult choices sure. to make. I mean, it's, yeah. it's you know, like which so, one do you love most? I mean, it's, so I'm going to offer and take a whack at this. And okay. commissioners, we can go back and visit any of these items or anything that you want to. But let me tr take a try at what I heard and what might be our priority list. Uh, Commissioner Roshan, can I uh, can I interrupt you for one second? I'm sorry. Um, I, I, know Scott. We, I know we have folks that are tuned in that might want to provide public comment, um, you know, before we get to a final decision making recommendation. That's right. Okay. So before we go there, thank yeah, you for that. I, I mean, whatever yeah. you want to put it in there, just before you make your final decisions, it'd be nice if we could, you know, maybe get the public. So before we do that discussion, we should definitely hear from the public. Thanks for that, Scott. Sure. Sure, no Is that all right with all everybody? Sure. Yep. There we go. Anthony, do we have see any hand raised uh, for public comment on this item, uh, which involves the nine items, the nine individual items we've discussed? This is high. This is the staff yeah. report that we've been discussing for agenda item C one. Anthony, any any hands raised? We have one raised hand from Betty Winholtz. I see Betty's hand. I think I mm. Did we lose Anthony? Uh, can you oh, guys, no. can um, you all hear us? Betty, can you hear it? Uh, can you you, can, can you hear me? Uh, we can, yes. Okay, then I'll go ahead and speak and I'll refer to your discussion. Um, um, for me, uh, passion for me has always been uh, housing for wildlife and housing for humans. And so I think homelessness has to be one of the top for me, uh, maybe not for you. Um, but there are other things that are attached to not just housing for the homeless, but um, warming stations and safe uh, vehicle uh, overnight places. And these are all minor things that could be happening and aren't. Um, and so I believe that we need to take those baby steps along the way with this um, like you're taking talking about the baby steps along with the climate action plan immediate things that we could do to help right away and so i don't know how you sort that out with you know nine topics but if you can tease out some some quick actions from each of several topics to deal with that would be great for example also the business improvement or the development design guidelines along 
Highway 1. That's a scenic highway. It's designated as a scenic highway, and we should be more careful with our designs along there. So obviously that's a real important one. I've already spoken to, to the preservation of history, and of course trees are very important to me as well. So I encourage you to tease out what you can that can be accomplished immediately and short term. Thank you. Betty, thanks as always. Thank you so much. Uh, Anthony, anybody else with a hand raised? Uh, this is Highland, and there are no hands currently raised in the queue. Highland, thank you. Um, give them another minute here. Um, so if we don't see any other hands raised, um, I'm going to go through and give an outline list of priorities and see where that goes. Uh, Mike, did you want to add something before we do that? Yeah, I just want to make a suggestion because I think it's it's true. Housing isn't going to leave the commission and it's not going to leave the council. The council's going to always think about housing and we're always going to think about housing. So let's just put that away. All right. So I just want to make sure that we understand that. So maybe that's a seven, eight, nine off our priority list and says, basically, that's our job. Our, that's our job. Every day is our job, right? At the council's working on it. We're working on it. So I'm just, I thought I'd, I'd put that up there, uh, Chair Roche, and just that way when you're marching through yours, you might want to just put seven, eight, nine together and saying we're working on it and the council's working on it. That's all I wanted to say. Let's give it a shot and see where we okay. go. Okay. So um, I'm going to list number one is historic preservation ordinance um, for all the things that were said. And I think everybody was on board for item three, historic preservation. Number two would be the tree bank program. I think everybody was on board for that. So we'll list that one as number two. Um, and again, I'm open to moving, moving any of these around. I'm gonna put number three, the climate action plan. And I know Joe was um, not convinced. Um, uh, you know, we can ask to hear from you again, Joe, on this item and see if three is good or, or, or not quite right from your point of view. Number four, I'm going to list the uh, financial districts. And that one is a question for Jen. Uh, the three of us were, uh, the other three were there. But, so those last two are a question for Joe and a question for Jen. Um, that would bring me to item number five, which I'm going to suggest, and, you know, Mike, we're, I'm open for change on this. I think we need to put housing in there as item five. For me, what that leaves out is the uh, BIDs. And based on our discussion, I would like to make BIDs number six as not really an action item for much for us as much, but as a, uh, a strong encouragement. So it's outside of our top five, but I still would like to put it on the list. What that means is we're not going to include the commercial guidelines in these top five, but that's with the understanding that we're going to go about with a, uh, a commission um, endorsement, uh, commission recommendation that working with Scott, hopefully Jen and I, you know, we can get something out really quickly. So that's the first pass. Um, Bill, can, we hear, can we hear first from Joe and Jen on those two items? Because you guys were the most undecided. Um, yeah, I, 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 I find that acceptable as a compromise. Again, you know, I, 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 I favor all of these things. It's, uh, you know, it's those that I favor the most at this, at this moment in time. Um, yeah, I, 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 don't have, I don't have a problem with that, and in particular because we're sort of doing a back-ended approach to the commercial design guidelines, which I think is perhaps even, even uh, a better way to do it. Because I, I really like what you said about how with each project we learn that much more. So uh, I think we can address that. Uh, I, I, nice. Yep. Yep. Joe, thank you. Jen, do you want to comment on the, what was the one you were concerned about, the financial districts? I'm I'm actually in agreement, Bill, with what you proposed. Um, I 
I actually did not comment on the affordable housing or housing for homeless or any of those three. Um, I was kind of state reserving my comment um, because I also, I actually had it tied for, for one of my um, top five and it was, I was having a really hard like internal war with myself, you know, <laughs> like how could I not put this on the list? Right. Like that, that just goes against everything that I believe in. So I agree with putting um, that as our number five, housing is our number five, but how I do believe that the business improvement district, the BID is so important um, that I love your recommendation, not as a necessary priority, but as a encouragement to, um, you know, maybe have support or however we want to word that. <laughs> So, so uh, um, tell me one more time, what are you suggesting, Jen? Do you think putting it in as six as a recommendation is the right thing or you're... Mm -hmm. you yeah, I, so I agree with um, historic preservation is one, I, all the ones that you ranked through five. Um, and then as a number six would be not as a priority, but as a recommendation um, or I don't know, uh, we highly encourage. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the proper you know wording would be for that. And I just saw a question, and I want to revisit it before I go to Mike. Um, the difference between the financial districts and the BID, Scott. I think the commissioner sort of understand, but let's make sure that it's really clear for the record. Uh, there are two entirely different things, two entirely different processes. Scott, could you kind of address that? Yeah, I mean, the business improvement group is a uh, um, the business improvement district is is really business owners getting together in a, in a specified area, a district, um, a boundary, and agreeing to tax themselves to do the improvements that they want to do. You come up with a plan that goes along with it. You say this is what you're doing, then they go vote on it, and then you kind of develop the plan a little bit more, and you go do those things. Say, like, again, my example to you was, um, you know, street furniture, planter boxes, you know, hanging plants, I don't know, things like that is an example. Um, the and other... I add before you leave BID, um, BIDs also create a board. Mm -hmm. uh, they have review in terms of, you know, the finances and what they're doing. So there's there's pretty strict requirements of how you operate and manage a BID. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. Yeah, um, it, there's there's similar regulatory you know components to the uh, enhanced infrastructure financing district as well. Um, usually, you this goes hand in hand with um, you know with with bonding. So you go to a vote for that basically, um, and you form a joint powers authority. That's the regulatory authority that oversees the program that's developed for this, and it and it really is taking the increase in tax revenue in these areas and uh, and applying it to, to the payoff the bonds over time. And like you say, it could be 20 years, it could be 15 years, depending on what it is. And you identify those improvements that you're going to make in that specific area. And it could be road improvements, could be street improvements, could be other infrastructure, water and sewer. It could be any number of things. Um, and so let me ask one question because I know less about financial districts. Would we be looking at one large financial district for most of the city, or would that be like a BID, a number of separate districts? Do you know? Uh, I believe we'd probably be looking at the opportunities and what they would look like in certain areas. Um, and we have the financial information. We get that. We're um, contracted uh, with a company that provides us financial information that comes out of our businesses, sales tax, and those types of things, and property tax. So we get that information. And so we would would be able to look at that and they would be able to help us see where it makes sense to form districts and where it doesn't um and then uh our city attorney's office has uh, quite a bit of experience my understanding in in uh, working on these in other communities um so so uh, th would the um you know the way the cra used to work they were one cra for you know a whole large area but then there were project areas within that large cra so every area in a city is not was not part of the CRA. Only areas that had those kinds of needs. Is that similar for the financing financing districts? Um, 
I believe, I mean, I, I think generally, yes. Um, there's a lot of nuance to it. And again, I haven't, ever, I haven't ever been involved in one. So all I've done is read about them. You know, how they actually function and work on the ground. I don't have that much experience with it. I, uh, so if we were interested in, um, uh, you know, an information session for the commission, um, I think that might be valuable for us. Um, it's a big tool. Uh, and, you know, I don't know a lot about the financing districts, but I think with what Morro Bay is facing would make a giant difference to us. So uh, maybe that's something the commission could consider. Certainly. I think that's, that, that's doable for sure. Okay. So, Mike, we left you out of that discussion. Thanks for your patience. Do you want to uh, opine on that, uh, that first pass list? Sure. You know, you, you got exactly where I was at, which was the we actually got housing in there in the top five. So, because I didn't think we were going to get it in there. But I, uh, Scott, how would you frame it then? Because basically, I'm saying seven, eight, and nine is all housing, affordable, homeless. You know, how would we b bump that up to the council under five? Would you just combine them all, seven, eight, nine? Do you think that's a good idea, planning would, commission? Would, yeah, I would. I would do that with some explanation. I mean, we okay. are we are working on housing right now. I mean, I told you know we're we're doing you know several different things, um, including you know updating policies that allow housing to come in, including inclusionary housing policies, our density bonus policies are being updated as part of the grant funding, um, and then the you know ADU thing that I was talking about before, and the in the development by right component. Um, so that's the that's the housing element implementation you know that we're doing yes. um, through the yes. grant, and then there's uh -huh. this other component related to homelessness, and we are looking at yes. some of the things um, that Ms. Winholtz talked about. Uh, we were looking at warming stations at one point. We are now looking at safe vehicle parking overnight, uh, coming up with a program for that. Um, so that dovetails in with you know uh, some discussions we've been having internally and with the council. So I think yeah. we can include all of that in there um, uh, because a lot of it's you know. Work being worked on by different departments, and so it's okay to say we support those types of things, and and the council will you know decide who's doing it and how it's being done. I guess. Yeah, so and that's it, why it that's what, that that's why Bill basically I left business improvement district and commercial design guidance out of my list, but I got seven, eight, and nine in there under housing. So you right. know, what I mean, basically we combined three into five and got dumped two. So we didn't do bad. We did well. Um, what are we going to call this, Mike and Scott? The uh, the housing thing. How do you merge those? Do we just call it affordable housing? Do we just call it? I, I, I would call it affordable housing, and I think it, it touches on all of those components. And that's what we'll that's what we'll put a description together to forward to uh, council. Is these are the things that we're we're, we're interested in. Um, the good thing is we're working on several of them, and there are initiatives that will take a while, so they will cover the next goal cycle. I mean, you know, we're going to be working on housing for a while, so um, you know that part of it's good. I mean, we're working on opportunities right now to upzone some properties in town uh, to get some uh, higher density housing where it's currently very low, um, and to get multifamily housing, which would you know serve folks that are working in our community. So uh, we have those are working through the pipeline right now. So um, some exciting stuff to come. Uh, I'm teasing you a little bit, but uh, you'll be seeing those soon enough. Yeah, and the, Bill, the only thing I wanted to say is the fact that he just hit it right there is the fact that density is going to become something of the future, right? Densities will start to move a little bit because of pressure from the state as well as just, you know, what what's the, the reality, but not the kind of density you're seeing in other places, but density, density will go up a little bit. For sure. Right, Scott? Isn't that about right? I, yeah, I don't disagree with you. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that makes sense. Yeah. So, commissioners, this has been an exciting exercise. Um, it's an important one, so I want to go around the table one more time so each of us gets a final kind of comment on what the list represents for us. Um, you're welcome to target anything specific, but also if you could just talk about maybe the value of this exercise uh, for our efforts at Morro Bay. Um, are you willing to do that, Commissioners? Joe, would, does that make sense to you? It does, it does, yes. Do you want to start? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, certainly, the, the the four out of the four out of the five were all in my my top five, and and I and I really value the experience of, of hearing each of you, uh, you know, explain your position on it. Um, 
and you know, and I don't have, I certainly don't have any objection to making, you know, climate change, you know, worthy of, of inclusion here. It's, it was just, uh, as, well, I won't, I won't bore you with what my, my position was before. Um, and, um, you know, it strikes me as, as a pretty worthwhile compromise to sort of push all of housing together because, you know, as, as Mike was saying, you know, homelessness is a function of rising house prices and, and, uh, and, and I'm particularly sensitive to the fact that, you know, Morro Bay is getting increasingly affluent and the property, the, the, the value of the dirt under the houses is, is growing exponentially and, and that's only going to continue. Um, and we, you know, we, we have to address this or we won't find ourselves uh, living in the same place that we find ourselves living in right now. To say nothing of the extreme pressure that it will place on people with limited incomes to remain here. And you really don't, you don't want to force people who are, you know, older in life and on fixed budgets to have to pick up and go someplace and dislocate themselves from friends and families and go someplace where they'd rather not go. That's what's happening. And that's, that's the end of my Thank you. Mike, you want to go next? Yeah, I'll go next. Um, one of the things that was, I, when I was talking to Bill earlier today, I said I was surprised the Morro Bay doesn't have a historical preservation district or, a, you know, historical, you know, uh, ordinance. I was just surprised, you know, but this is about time where it's time because like I said, it takes about 75 years to get there. I lived in a city was a, that was twice as old and we had a lot of history and we saved it all, the good stuff. So I think it's time for that. Trees are gonna benefit everyone. We've lost so many during these fires and everything else. And it's it's a good, like uh, Bill said, it, 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 talk, it says a lot about us as a city when we're planting beautiful trees and you, wherever we can, right? It's our character. So let's continue to do it. Climate action, we're all, um, you, you know, we all have to focus on climate right now. We're, we're almost out of water. There's that, I think there's a list of 30 cities that don't have water right now, small cities that are out of water. So, you know, let's get on, you know, climate's not going to, you know, it should be on there. Financial districts, again, I support that because uh, I'm working on public benefits. Right, but I think Bill wants us to march through. Remember, and the benefit of what Bill and I talked about earlier is, I said I came in with my list, and I'm going to say why I support them. Right, Bill, remember when, why I support that? Because I'm working on some public benefits I'd like to see out of these financial districts, and what's happening with these big projects in Morro Bay. I want to see something back for that. And then, of course, housing, and that's it. Housing has to be part of everything we do because we're never going to have enough, and it's never going to be affordable enough. So that's it for me, Bill. Nice, Mike. Thank you. Jen. Yeah. Um, I love discussions like this. I feel like uh, as planning commissioners, we get to know, we get to look inside each of us a little bit, um, get to know each other a little bit better. And, um, you know, discussing our vision of the future of Morro Bay, I think is valuable. And, um, you know, I already mentioned that I agree with all of, the one through five plus the recommended six um, or supportive six. I, I just, I think they're, they're all incredibly important elements uh, for a city that have to be addressed or already mostly being addressed and need to continue. Um, as a renter in Morro Bay, I don't own a home and I don't know that I ever will. <laughs> you know, I, I, I it's, it's very expensive for me. Um, I'm a business owner here, um, trying to do well in our city as a business owner. So I have, you know, I have a personal, um, interest in a lot of these items, but I also have to think about our community as a whole. And I think that all of these priorities address or, or apply to everyone in our community in some way, shape or form. Um, so I'm, I'm proud of our list and I'm ready to move forward with it. Nice, well, thank you. I, I, I sort of really enjoyed this process. Um, I wanna thank Scott, not only for his insight, um, but you know, bringing it to us in this way gave us a chance to, uh, you know, Jen said it so well. I mean, it's we began to build our vision, and you know, Joe. I mean, you know, your your sort of take on it was was clear. Mike, it was clear. 
Um, I think the outcomes are good. Not just do we have this list, but I do think moving the commercial design guidelines along for the highway uh, is a nice outcome. So in some ways, this feels to me like an accomplishment. <laughs> Um, so I feel good about it. Um, I think some of the nuances is that in looking at our, our recommended efforts here, it does have a vision for the city. Um, we are talking about energy, trees, preservation. And I wanted to end with preservation and thank Betty and thank Glenn uh, for their comments and enthusiasm. And I think there's a, a substantial awareness in the, in the city of Morro Bay to go to Mike's point to really bring preservation alive here. And um, I could not, I, for me, it's one of the most important things that we can do for our brand as a city and to show our respect for our, not just our history and our past, but our predecessors. So um, I like this. Um, do we need a motion? Uh, it'd be great to have a motion. Uh, I'd like to be able to forward something like that to city council. Yeah, that'd be great. Sure. Commissioners? I'll make the motion uh, to support the five uh, top priorities we came up with as a planning commission in a good discussion. I don't know how long that discussion was, Scott, about an hour, but I think we did a good yeoman's job in coming up with a great list. Good, good. I, and I make a motion to, to move that to council as our priorities. Thank you. And can I ask you the, the sure. number six, the item of support, Does, is that included in your motion? Yeah, do you want it in there, Bill? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. And that would be what Bill just clarified because we had the top, the six would be the the business improvement district. Yes. Is that the one? Okay, good. It, so that's it's the not one. top five, but it's six showing support. Okay, good. Yeah, so that's my motion. Do I have a second? Jen? I'll second it. Yeah, I'll second it. Thank you very much. Scott, would you pull the commission, please? Uh, sure. Uh, Commissioner Rodriguez. Yes. Commissioner Ford. Yes. Commissioner Ingrapia. Yes. Vice Chair Roche. Yes. Motion passes four zero. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you all. That was that was really fun. Um, we've got a couple of quick things, which I think we're almost done here. But uh, let me go through the rest of the agenda. Hey, Bill, real quick. Can, I, yeah. can we take like a can we take like a three minute break? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just need to you know the rest of the Bill, you're not in LA anymore, Bill. You're not in LA anymore. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so if we could just take a quick, I don't know, is three minutes enough for everybody or for me? It's sure. Yeah, take five minutes. You're, you're, five you're minutes. the smartest one in the group. Yes, of okay. course. Uh, <laughs> okay, so five minutes. But uh, yeah, five fifty six. I'm sorry, seven fifty six. Does that make sense? Five minutes? Yeah, perfect. Yes. Okay. But I'm going to stay on. I mean, chimed in here, so I don't want to, you know, log off and have to log back in. I'm going to drop. I'm uh, going to get something to drink, Mike. I'll be right back. Okay, no problem.
Okay, let's go ahead and wrap here. I think it's going to be pretty quick, um, but you never know. Uh, new business was that. If there's nothing else under new business, right? Anybody have anything under new business? Scott? There's nothing else, no. You know, can I can I say something, uh, Bill? Sure. I've been thinking about this only because uh, so much is happening. But I was used to be part of the American Planning Association. I don't know if you were, you know, the APA. Yes. And there's so right. many good ideas out there. I mean, you know, we're 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 trying, right? We're bending our own wheel here. But you'd be surprised. There's another Morro Bay out there, you know, that's dealing with the same type of issues, right? I used to be part. I used to love that because I would get that. I would get, you know, somebody else's experience, like like Joe said. You know, you get that experience, you learn from it. But maybe somebody else has done it. So I just was going to ask God if what our ability to be members of the APA are again, because I think I asked you that before, Scott, if we were members of the APA, because I just think there's so many resources we can pull from. We, it, it will, yeah. The city is a member. Yeah, I mean, the city is a member. But yeah. Because the planning commissioners where we were, if we wanted to be, we were because we were sent like, you know, information. We were kept up to date on, you know, the latest, greatest, you know, beach communities or whatever. But I just don't know if planning commissioners are involved with that. I'll, uh, the, I'll, I'll, I'll check into what it would take. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, That's all I wanted to bring up, Bill. Yeah. That's all for me, Bill, because I just think it would fix interest. Yeah. 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 I'm supportive. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. Unfinished business, uh, D1, um, our development review subcommittee. Scott, do you have any update for us? I um, don't have much beyond what we talked about last time. We're still working on the, the, the improvements for the um, project tracking system, uh, electronic uh, application and plan submittal. Um, you know, that's sort of not involving involving the subcommittee it's the other tract of this it's just i had to kind of pick one uh in the beginning until we get staffed up here which is on the on its way um but i think we are gonna you know probably have a meeting uh here coming up probably with joe and and, and bill to, to have a discussion to kind of see if we can't frame what the next step is on that side of things um we're not going to have our next planning commission meeting is uh we don't have any items for the agenda so um that'll give us a few weeks maybe to where we can maybe get together and have a discussion and have something you know maybe more concrete for the for the following meeting to report back <laughs> and that sounds great. And I think if, if at that meeting we could lay out a bit of a schedule in terms of, you know, when these things are going to work for you, uh, when the staffing is going to, you know, be at the right level to support these efforts, it would be great to be, for us to be able to speak to that. Um, so thank you, Scott. Joe, do you want to add anything? No, I, I, I really don't have anything to add. Sounds good. Well, to I'll, add it, I'll add it for you, Joe. That yeah. I think that would be a great time for me, you, and Sean. I actually tried to reach out to Sean today, Joe, so maybe we can take the, the meeting we're not going to have and get back to our work. How, how does that sound? I just thought I'd throw that out there. So our subcommittee is is involved, you know, inclined, so we just need to get back together. Yeah. Well, you just jumped up to D2, so that was the, uh, the public benefit subcommittee. That's you guys. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, great. Then I didn't even I I don't have my other no. cell phone with me, so perfect. Is that all you have to say? It's, yeah, Joe's on every every subcommittee we have. So. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Thank you, Joe. This is good. Uh, Scott, anything on the uh, public? Uh, you know, benefit subcommittee? Uh, not a lot beyond what uh, Commissioner Rodriguez said. Um, they've been waiting for uh, Sean Green to get back in uh, here uh, to, uh, I think, back into the States so they could meet with him. Um, he was in Greece. So, uh, and I think that was the idea. They were going to, he was going to be coming back into town and uh, they were going to set up a meeting with him. And I think he's either back now or close to being back. Uh, and so that'll be coming forward in the future, I suppose, in the near future, I suppose. I, I, I'm excited about both subcommittees. Um, you know, so Joe, you're the core guy here, but uh, you know, I, I think it's good stuff. So Scott, thank you. Um, any other comments on our subcommittees, guys? If not, planning commissioner comments, future agenda items. Jen, you always have something good. I, uh, that's that's a really high expectation there, Bill. Um, <laughs> actually, um, I'm actually this question's for Scott. Um, I, I'm curious if we get to see the latest parking um, survey or uh, study that was done by the city, or I think it was a a, a third party that did it for us. Um, 
do we get to see that? Does that come across our agenda ever, or is that only city council? You do get to see it. Uh, we will be making the uh, what I call the uh, advisory body roadshow, <laughs> and we will be coming before the planning commission with it to, to present it to you, uh, public works advisory board uh, and the harbor advisory board to have. Um, all of you will get to uh, get to see it. It'll be presented to you, and you get to weigh in on it. Uh, and uh, and eventually, the planning commission will be if we do decide to do anything, meaning create paid parking anywhere, you will be reviewing the application for the permits for that. So. So uh, it requires a coastal development permit, um, no matter where we put it uh, in the city. So you'll be weighing in on that part of it for sure. So permitting and you'll get a presentation on the actual report. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jen. Um, others, any uh, agenda items, commissioner comments? I think we're worn out. I like it. Um, Scott, I hope you're worn out too. No, I got a couple things for you. Um, no. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I like that Betty uh, Winholtz. Uh, she mentioned it earlier. I'm going to mention it again. Uh, the city's general plan, local coastal program, is going before the um, coastal commission for certification on August 12th. That's a Thursday, and it's going as submitted. No change. Mm. Great. I've been the coastal planner for over 20 years. I've never seen that before. Mm. Wow. Like, yeah. Wow. That is a wow. Um, I already mentioned that we don't have a meeting on the 17th because we don't have any items. Um, and uh, one other thing. Oh, uh, speaking back to the you know staffing issues we were having, we're in the process of staffing back up right now. Um, we've uh, commenced interviews on the assistant planner position today. That's a full-time position. Um, we've identified a good candidate to offer the position, and she's accepted. Um, so that we're pretty excited about that. Um, and uh, we just had our planning intern start on Monday this week, so we're training her up. She's a grad student at Cal Poly, which is exciting. You'll probably at some point get to see her at a meeting presenting a project, so that'll be good. Um, and we start interviews Thursday for our office assistant position that was removed as part of the economic impacts of COVID. Um, and uh, so hopefully we'll have our administrative staff back as well. So uh, filling a lot of holes all at one time, but I'm happy to have them filled and uh, have some new faces around here. So you're, back to Monday, you're back to Monday through Friday, right, Scott? We are open to the public. No, you, you, you personally, Scott. You're back to Monday through Friday only. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. You'll never do that. If, if only. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I was oh. just joking about that. Yeah. Hey, it's going to support you. It's supporting your work, so that's great. Yeah, I'm excited. Great. Well, congratulations on the hires, and I yes. know that means a lot. Um, and I think, you know, it always is helpful to say thank you to you and your efforts. Nancy was great. And uh, the commission really, you know, we're, we're doing better because of staff's efforts. So thank you for that. Um, my question is, should Scott not be allowed on video uh, in future meetings? <laughs> no, let's put him on video. He's better on video. I, I will have it fixed by the next meeting, I yeah. promise. I, I kind of missed him. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. His, face, his facial expressions sometimes you know yeah. I know well that's all good I think uh, adjournment does anybody yes, have a second. 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 No. No. Great job. great job great uh, job Vice Chair. yeah great job yeah. Uh, yes. thank, thank you guys okay. it was fun all right. we'll see you guys soon take care okay. thank you all okay bye adjourned bye